potage ambassadeur is a delicious thick soup that is both classy and affordable. Indeed, its main ingredient is split peas. It is very similar to potage Saint-Germain. It's the garnish that makes it bear a different name. To make the soup, you will need peas soaked overnight in cold water, butter lettuce, about half of the lettuce, leeks, sorrel or aragula if sorrel is not available at the market, onion, carrot, chicken stock, parsley or chervil if available, salt, pepper, cream, butter, rice, garlic and smoked bacon. Start by draining the peas and wash them with cold water. Good. Drain the peas. Transfer the peas to a pot. And cover the peas with cold water. And take it to the stove. On high heat, bring the water to a boil. Then slice the bacon. We're going to make little lardons, so little pieces of bacon. If it's too large, cut it in half, put it together. Then slice the garlic. So make sure your garlic, you peel it and remove the germ. And the soup is going to be blended, so it doesn't have to be very thin or very small. It's an easy soup. So position your fingers very well and slice it. Then reserve your garlic on the side of the bacon. Right. And let's cut the carrot. Cut the carrot in half, then into four pieces, and we are going to cut it into small paysans. So we are going to learn what is a paysan further in the course. But roughly, you want to cut everything small. Reserve the carrot. and let's cut the onion. For the onion, we are going to cut the onion into quarters, so half and quarter. Then we're going to cut the core off and discard the core. So the core has been uh, the part close to the root side. Okay. Then slice each quarter. What is important at this time is how to position your finger very well, safely. Speed will come later. Reserve the onion with the rest of the vegetables and let's start to cook. In a large pot, melt half of the butter. Add the chopped vegetables and bacon to the melted butter. Turn down the heat to medium-low and sweat those vegetables or cook them on low heat without browning. So cook them for about 5 minutes. Meanwhile, skim your split peas. So with the skimmer, just pick up the form here. Skimming is important because it allows you to remove impurities from the peas. Also, they will cook faster by blanching them. Drain them. And refresh them under cold water again. You really want to stop them cooking. 
good. Leave them in the colander, place the colander over the pot and let them drain. So here we are. I use the term sweating, which is the action to cook food in a small amount of fat in order to melt down the juices and to have them evaporated without burning the food. It is the opposite to saute, where you cook food on high heat in order to roast it on the outside to make it brown and to keep the moisture on the inside. Here, sweating, moisture out on low heat to melt down the food, you see? The idea here, especially for the onions, is to melt them down to remove the strong flavor of the onions. That will be also the case with the leek. We are going to add them in a minute. Cut the leek. Today we are going to use only the green part, not the white part. You may use that part for another recipe, such as potage cultivator next week. So, position your finger all over the leek, holding it. Position your finger over into a claw position and finely slice the green part. around. Good. Do the same for the second leak. If you want at home, you may use only one leak and use the whole thing. It's up to you. But the real recipe is with only green part of the leeks. Add the leeks to the chopped vegetables and cook everything here for about five minutes on low heat, stirring from time to time. Then add the blanched peas. and cover with a stock. Stir. Make sure that all vegetables are in the liquid. And bring the soup to a bowl on high heat. The soup is boiling. Allow the soup to simmer for about 30 minutes or until the peas are soft. Then Stack the leaves from the biggest one toward the smallest ones, like so. Okay. Then roll them like a little cigar. Position your finger over and slice into thin strips. For sorrel or arugula, in this case, uh, it will be hard to roll. So just Place them together, you can still make a shape on that by just slicing it. And at the end it's just stamps, discard that. Boil some water, about two cups, add some salt to taste, and cook your rice. We, cook, we call this technique to cook the rice creole style, which means in a lot of boiling water. When you plunge the rice, stir and cook the rice for about 14 to 16 minutes. Maybe less. It depends which rice you are using. So check on the package. It's not very important to use basmati, jasmine, uh, Uncle Ben's rice, or round rice, such as uh, rice for risotto. You know, use what you have, not a big deal. The thing is, cook your rice as per the instruction on the package. Check your rice for doneness. Rice is tender, it is soft. So then drain the rice. And refresh it under cold running water. 
and let it drain. In a saucepan or a pan, melt the remaining butter. Add the chiffonade. Stir. So cook on low heat until totally melted for about a couple of minutes. When the chiffonade has totally melted down and cooked, then reserve off the heat. Now, let's have a look at the soup. Check for the peas or the tenderness of the peas. Hmm, still a bit crunchy, so we're going to cook it a bit longer. The soup has been cooking for 45 minutes and I added some water earlier as it was getting too thick. So check the tenderness of the peas. So here they look like mushy a little bit. Hmm. Peas are soft. Add some seasoning, so salt and pepper. Mix well. Add the cream. And process with a hand blender. So process until very thin. And hand blender, it's a great tool to have at home. If your soup is too thick, then add some chicken stock or a little bit of water to expand it. Add some of the rice to the chiffonade and reserve some to garnish on the top. There we go. Then pass the soup through a sieve. Use a whisk to push through. Then use the whisk to clean under the sieve and discard the solids. Continue. It is best to use sorrel when it is available. However, here we are using arugula today uh, because really what you want is to have a little bit of bitterness. So arugula could be a good substitute for sorrel. This is hard work. What a workout. There we go. Make sure to clean your uh, whisk here and pick up the bottom underneath here. There we go, because there you will have the pulp. Reheat the soup before serving. You may taste the soup and rectify the seasoning. Mm. Excellent. It doesn't need any salt or pepper. It's perfect. It's hot. Let's serve. Mix well. So the soup is pretty smooth, it's nice. This is why we strain it. So this is how much we remove from the soup. To have those shells in the soup, the soup wouldn't be as smooth and pleasant in the mouth. Then garnish the soup with a little bit of white rice here. Just to show this a little bit for color. And chervil sprig or parsley. Potage ambassadeur, et voilà, bon appétit